Hey guys, it's Turnro here, and today I'll be continuing on how to use the Campaign Editor for Warcraft 3. In the previous video, we took a look at the Campaign Editor window within the World Editor, which allowed us to create a campaign file and set its basic information, set the maps we wanted to be included within the campaign, some screen buttons, a background screen, as well as custom data and imported files relevant to the campaign. In this video, we'll be taking a look at a more specific area commonly used in campaigns, which includes mission loading and hero saving. What we want to happen is that once the player completes the first mission, titled My First Map, they will automatically proceed to the second mission titled My Second Map and the hero they had in the first map will automatically load in the second map with the appropriate items and spells. And so what we need to do is we need to create some triggers within the maps themselves. So we go into the first map, Bandit Ridge, where we create the necessary triggers to load the next mission and to save the hero data. Now for simplicity purposes, we're going to have this stuff run once the player reaches a region, a random region on the map. So we're going to just create one right here. We're going to double click on it and we'll call it mission end and press OK. Next, we're going to go over to the trigger editor. We're going to create a new trigger. We call it set next level. And we're going to create an event for this trigger, or when the trigger is going to run, once a unit enters this region. And we ideally want to make sure that the unit entering the region is a unit owned by the actual player themselves. So we create a condition called if the owner of entering unit equal to player one. And there we go. The first action we're going to do is we're going to go to press T on the keyboard and turn off this trigger. And what this will do is it will make sure that this trigger only runs once. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to save the hero data. So we go to G on the keyboard for game cache. We go create game cache. We call it new campaign.w3v. Now there's a couple of things you need to know about naming in Warcraft 3 with files. And that is that they cannot have any spaces within the name. They cannot have any special characters. And they are case sensitive, meaning that this word is different to this word. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because one common mistake people make when trying to save hero data or mission loading is that it doesn't work because they haven't named it correctly or they've made a simple spelling mistake. So you will need to ensure that what names you give to the hero and the data are consistent throughout your maps. And in regards to the file convention, it's W3V. Uh, you can also use W3X if you want to. It's entirely up to you. And so the next action we're going to do is we're going to save the hero. So we go to G, game cache. We store the player's hero which is the Paladin, name it Paladin of Second Mission of Last Created Game Cache. So we're storing the Paladin unit as a name within a certain category. You click OK. Then the next action we're going to do is we're going to go Game Cache save last created game cache. 
And what this will do is it will save whatever data was specified in the player's profile on their computer. So now with the hero saved, we can now specify the actual mission loading. So we go into game, we go show custom campaign button two. What this does is if we go back into the campaign editor, you will notice that the screen buttons have a number next to them. And what we're saying in the triggers here is we want to show the custom campaign button to, which means that we want this button to show, which is the second map. So the next action we need to do is we need to set the next level that will run. So we go into game, set next level to whatever name, the actual file name of the second map, which is this. So we go back into the trigger editor and we go to ogre mound w 3 x And then the last action we do is we make the player win the mission. So we go into game, we go victory for player one and show dialogues and scores. Why not? So we are saving the hero data. We are unlocking the next mission within the campaign loading screen. We are specifying that the next mission that will run and we are making the player win the mission. So that's all we need to do for the first map. So we save this map we close it and then we go into the next map. You will notice that the second map now appears below the first map, which essentially says that this map is a possible map that will load once the player completes the first mission. It is possible to have uh, multiple different missions that could load within a map and they will all show beneath it, which is a handy feature. And so now we are going to edit the second map, Ogre Mound, where we are going to load the hero at the beginning of the map. Now, what we wanna do is we want to create a region where the hero is going to load, which I had already taken the liberty of doing so earlier, Paladin Load Point. So going into the triggers, we're going to create a new trigger. We're going to call it load hero. Whoops. Now, because it's a separate trigger, we will need to go into the map initialization trigger, create a new action, go T for trigger and go run load hero. Then within the load hero, trigger, we're going to create a new action, go to G for game cache, create a game cache for new campaign W3V, which is the exact same name we gave the game cache in the first map. Then we're going to go G again for game cache, we're going to go restore paladin of second mission of last created game cache for player at paladin load point. And that is the basics of what you would do to load the hero. Now let's say for example, that the player's profile save got corrupted and the hero data they have is not there. One thing you can do to ensure that the still map still runs appropriately is to create a, an entirely new hero if the data doesn't exist. So we're going to create a new variable. We're going to call it 
Paladin, set it as a unit type. We're going to go new action, set variable, set Paladin equal to last restored unit. And this will allow us to keep track of the actual Paladin unit throughout the map. Then we're going to create an if condition where we're going to say if Paladin is equal to no unit, meaning that the Paladin unit doesn't exist, then we are going to create a new Paladin hero, going to unit, create one Paladin for player one at Paladin load point. We're going to go set variable, set Paladin to last created unit. And we can even do additional stuff like a hero. Learn skill for Paladin. Holy light. And there we go. Now, in order to ensure that we can identify whether or not the hero is loading properly, we're going to make one slight change to the previous map where we're going to set a hero's spell. So other than holy light. So if we go double click on the hero, set devotion aura, and then we save. So if all is working correctly, the hero will load and they will have devotion aura. So now that we've done all the triggers necessary for loading the mission and hero saving, it's now time to test what this will look like in game. What would you ask of me? For my people, as you wish. At your call. And that pretty much ends this tutorial video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be doing more tutorial videos for the world editor. But until then, I will catch you guys next time. Bye now.